it ain't easy to make it in this league. And it's certainly difficult to make it look easy night after night, year after year. And Adam Silver said it, you know, last night when he was introducing the rings and the team. He said the Warriors are defined by their stars, but really their defining trait is their resiliency. It really is. They just keep coming. You know how easy it is to be well-fed and not hungry? The amount of guys on the Golden State Warriors that should check the box of well-fed, therefore no longer that hungry, is a lot of guys. But it doesn't happen. I don't know how that doesn't happen. It seems like an unnatural thing. It's got to be Svengali by, you know, whatever Steve Kerr has to tell you about stories about greatness, whatever Clay Thompson, Steph Curry want to do to continue to encourage everyone. I mean, Clay, I can see why it would happen in Clay because Clay saw it all taken away from him. And then with arduous rehab, he got it back. Curry, again, you know, his career was threatened by that ankle. So maybe, you know, it dangled on a thread early enough for him to be scared of that thread the rest of his career. Um, well, a couple of things. As, as it regards Curry, I don't think any of the young guys want to be part of the reason why he doesn't get at least one more championship. Right. And the other thing is, and say what you will about his current state, Draymond Green had been the conscience of this team for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that matters too. That's one of the things that's going to be interesting to see as this season develops. You know, can he dig his way out of their doghouse? Because I think they're they're looking at him with a good deal of skepticism. And how he chooses to go about this this year is going to go a long way toward telling me how, how title capable they really are. Because I don't know that there's anybody on this roster who can do the defensive things he can do even now. But part of what made him who he is is he was also the guy who could tell you where you needed to be and what you needed to do at the right time. Yeah, he could be a scold, but he was a valuable resource. We'll see if he can still be that. I've honestly had no problem with Draymond Green, his style of leadership, his behavior, his interactions. I, every now and then, he's just pushing it with officials, and I ask myself, well, why? You know, you clearly have turned yourself into an... You know, you, you, you've robbed yourself of the benefit of the doubt, which seems like a funny thing to do. But he's kind of a funny guy. It wasn't until the punch that I think everyone started reevaluating who he is, what he means. And, and I got to tell you, there might be enough firepower on this team that must play defense through Draymond nature of this team. I think it's changed a little. I think it's changed a little. You know, Jordan Poole, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins showing up, being a defender that no one ever really expected him to be. It mutes the, important, the importance of Draymond Green just a little. And I think there is absolutely no unintended consequence of him being muted by this franchise intentionally last night in that ceremony. There are three tentpole Golden State Warriors. Two of them got microphones. One didn't. That was odd. But it was also, I think, to be... Uh, I wasn't thinking about it, so I guess I can't say I was expecting it, but hindsight being twenty twenty, maybe that's part of, you know, the discipline of Draymond Green that this team danced around and didn't really enact in any way that it would affect the regular season. And I don't blame them because that's kind of cutting off your nose to spite your face. If your locker room thinks you got your arms around it, well, then your arms are around it. So that's all you need. But his little patty cake with LeBron James right in front of the Warriors bench. Like that's some candy ass nonsense. It just that that the way that Steve Kerr called the timeout after the three point shot led to a layup and you even read his lips. He just turned and he said that can't happen. Yeah, that would dream on. That can't happen. That can't happen. You want to roll with your boy LeBron James? Call him after the game. Meet him in the hallway. Dap him up out there. You look like you're trying to show everybody, like, look, LeBron is my friend. LeBron is my friend. And Andre Iguodala 
had the great. Look at it this way: Andre Iguodala is not going to have an in-game dunk that's harder than how hard he dunked on that interaction, just sitting there in a sport coat. The reverse pepper shaker, brilliant, Lucas. Who told you that? I, I, no, no. I want to know how, where he learned it because I don't think he. I don't think he knows what a pepper shaker is. It's like a salt shaker. Gee, thanks. It's kind of the opposite of the salt shaker. But yeah, no. It's it's uh, the the yeah. Somebody said here on the Xfinity Mobile text line, phasing him out silently. I think that's probably a good way to say it. I mean, that's, I'm not sure they're phasing. Well, not him. phasing him, but phasing him out of being a a a a, a forward facing. Golden State Warrior, here's your mic time. Here you are in the you know, dead center of the group photo anymore. Uh, that I don't know if that exists for him. Well, I don't. Not, not right now. I mean, he's going to have to, you know, repay all of his dues. But there are going to be times this year when they're going to need him to be him. And the Warriors are pragmatic enough, as much as he might make them grind their teeth, they're pragma- pragmatic enough to know that he's still not replaceable on a game in game out basis. Regular season game in game out, yeah, he's damn well replaceable. Playoffs, that's when Draymond will be important. He'll be important when they go on a long Eastern swing against good teams. He needs to be that. I mean, you have to you have you have to earn your minutes no matter how many years you've been there. And that's when you'll see if he's up to the new definition of what his task is. 888-957-9570. Last night, the Golden State Warriors played everybody on the roster except for, uh, except for PBJ and the team's equipment manager. I mean, it was, it, it, it was a, an embarrassment of riches that the Lakers have to look at and just go, oh my God, this game's over before it even starts. We just can't keep up with that. When the Warriors' second unit came out there and just started putting it on the Lakers starters, that was another really good sign. And oh, by the way, Steph Curry afterwards was talking about the deep bench and how Steve Kerr is going to have an awful lot of work doling out minutes this year. The biggest thing is that throughout the 82 games, you got to weather the storm. You know, there's going to be a couple of injuries. You know, you're going to hit some some rough patches that to be able to have that many guys to throw out there, it, it matters. But I think most importantly is when you get to the playoffs, you know, the rotation is going to tighten a lot and everybody's going to have an opportunity to earn those minutes and figure out what our best lineups are to go win a championship. Throughout the regular season, we've talked about it since, you know, 14, 15. Everybody matters in that in that journey. Even if you're not the guy that's, you know, 8, 9, 10, you still have to be ready. You still got to be locked in. And all that stuff starts, has, been, has started in the, pre, in the off season, but it starts now in terms of building the right habits, just the right approach to the game, because you never know. Things change really quickly throughout the regular season, and, and everybody has to be ready. So it's a great luxury to have. But there's difficulties with what comes with it, because people are going to be pissed off coming off the court when knowing that they didn't play that night. So you have to just be patient with it. You know, we've all gone through it at some point in your career. And luckily, Steve Kerr's single greatest attribute as a future Hall of Fame head coach is how he manages people how he sets expectations, how he holds people accountable, and how he communicates. That's what's going to get the Warriors. That's what got war- the Warriors through the Draymond situation, talking to people, managing egos, and communicating. Steve Kerr is the Magellan of that. Bob Myers is just as good. So you have two guys in your organization working at you from two different levels, from outside the locker room and from inside the locker room. In the most positive, ego-managing, expectation-setting, no one should get angry or be surprised by how much or how much they are, you know, they are or are not playing. It's really something else. It's, it's an incredible operation that they have. And I got to tell you, a little earlier this morning, Ray, I was in the car and I was listening to Butcher Boy and I think that uh, Willard was listening to the same segment because Willard said, you know, Butcher Boy brought up something and I want to talk about it. And then I heard Willard bring it up. And so Willard brought up something that Butcher Boy started talking about and I want to talk about it too. 
We're going to have to talk about where Joe Lacob really does fall in line, not in terms of great Bay Area owners, where he is now definitively on the one line all by himself, but in the great owners in the history of sports. It's a small team photo. He's already in that photo. He is moving himself to dead center front row with all that this team has accomplished in his dozen years that he has been their owner. They are a success to phenomenon level of success with literally no failure to be found because even the failure has been the fuel that has allowed them to keep on going successfully. Well, you lost to the Cavaliers because Draymond got suspended and you blew the 3-1 lead. That got you Kevin Durant. That got two titles. Well, after he left, you had Steph Curry get injured. Obviously, the Clay Thompson injury two years in a row, and those two years bottomed out. Those got you into the lottery. Those got you the stocked cupboard that you have right now. And we're compl- talking about all this depth like we always, almost have to complain about it. It's so aggressive. Even success can be found in the failure. And I don't know how many, how many owners got that going for them. It's really something else. We'll get, we'll get to all of that later. Real quick, this is Sparky. Sparky's in Alameda. What's going on, Sparky? Gentlemen, I enjoy every single thing you guys said. Everything sounds so clever. It's like, oh, my God. But <laughs> to the point, why does German Green want to start at like a fan base that we got to pick and choose? What do, what do he got to do that? What does he want to be like? Yo, uh, I, I'm a better man. Bro, you know nothing without Draymond Green. This is a special message to you, Draymond Green. I hope you listen to this. Bro, you got this with them. You couldn't done it by yourself. Stop kissing LeBron's ass. Well, it's- look, I mean, you, you know, you're friends with LeBron James. Congratulations. That's that's cool. You know, there's there's no doubt. That's, that's cool. Um, when you're interacting with an opponent, that has your entire bench looking at you funny in Iguadala wringing out the towel, which is the way I was going to describe it. I mean, I could do it on YouTube, but, you know, could be kids watching there too. But it, it, it's when, when, when someone says you are riding that man's you-know-what so hard that you're embarrassing yourself, Andre Iguadala, I don't know how many games he's going to play. He's here to be Draymond Police. I think that's his job. He's Draymond Police. Because that's probably the only guy in the locker room that can look at him, squint at him, and have his full attention. Maybe Curry. But I could even see Draymond being dumb enough to disrespect Steph Curry somehow, some way. No, he's he's smart about who he can push and who he can't push. I, quite frankly... Uh, yeah, no, you're I right. Mean, he does pick and choose who I, he bullies. Look, he... You know, Post punch, he's backed away from Poole, too. And Poole doesn't have nearly the resume that he's got. No, but he's twice the player. It that's not he's not twice the player. Don't don't, don't lose perspective here. He's twice the player. He's not twice the player. He's twice the player. Draymond Green is a perfect fit on this team. Jordan Poole could go to any NBA city and ball out, possibly be an all-star. Any NBA city. Draymond Orlando. is he could get thirty a night in Orlando. And none of them would matter. Well, th- I'm, th- I'm not talking about no, the no, team. no, no, no. It, 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 let's not, you know, let's not lose perspective of what Draymond Green's resume is. It's incredible. Okay, then, but it's solely dependent on him ending up on this team. Had sure. Le- had Draymond Green been a Cleveland Cavalier post LeBron, you don't even know about him. And if Poole ends up in Orlando as a draftee he rather, might be an all-star or he might be out of the league because the first two years he did remarkably little he got shepherded very well by this team he yes, owes he a did. lot to this team too yes he does so let's i mean let's not take away things that don't deserve to be taken away all my only point is draymond green has not picked a fight with anybody since then he's tried to be on his version of his best behavior. He's had a good three weeks. Yeah. So okay. I'll well, that. you know, when he has screwed up in the past, he's had longer stretches than that. This is just the start of his recalibration. 